Tom, I don't know if you've got a moment just to, to give us a very quick update. Are these letters coming in thick and fast? Yeah, they are. As I say, 27 to go through. One exchange that I'm looking at right here between Elliot Morley and uh, Prince Charles. This September 2004. This is the reply from uh, Charles. Really issuing a number of issues surrounding the high seas task force, so surrounding fishing issues, the environment. Uh, one phrase that I can pick out within that, incidentally I'm also looking forward to the publication of the Royal Commission's report on sustainable fishing. I hear on my own grapevine that it may be quite hard hitting, which can only be a good thing, and I just hope that the powers that be and the general public take note of its findings. So this is Prince Charles certainly illustrating him being tapped into the uh, information that is coming out of government, things that are upcoming, and also expressing to a degree a view, not necessarily hugely controversial or necessarily hugely groundbreaking, but expressing a view nonetheless. And in his own words, we are seeing for the first time uh, just what he has been saying to various government departments. And of course, this comes after a long legal battle. Uh, started by the Guardian newspaper. Ten years it has taken to get to this point. The pendulum has swung many times between Prince Charles's right to privacy and also the principles that underpin the Freedom of Information Act, those being the public interest argument that has seen this today. 27 letters coming out, and including that one, the first kind of incident where we can see him writing to Elliot Morley, one of the Labour uh, cabinet ministers, certainly expressing views on environment policies. And I guess as these letters come out, a lot of people will be cross-checking to what the government did at the time and trying to establish whether or not it's possible to establish if any influence was brought to bear. Yes, and we've spoken to people who were in Westminster at the time who say that in some instances these letters went straight to the top of the ministerial in-tray and that things did happen in relation to responding certainly to Prince Charles. Just how he was viewed across government, of course, is very difficult to gauge, but it is something, of course, that the underpinning principles for the monarchy is one of political neutrality, and therefore being seen to influence in this way may be an uncomfortable process, and I know that we'll be hearing from Clarence House more this afternoon as to their feelings and perhaps their view as the context of these letters.